Hello. It's been a little while. Let's play some Minecraft. I'm going to take a look at some old servers I found. These range from a few years to over a decade old, spanning across a ton of different updates. Let's not delay and get things started. This first one's called Run Safe and has apparently been up since 2011, according to this sign here. This is right around when the game itself actually released, so that's kind of cool. When I got on, I saw this message that I could only access it for seven more days because the world was closed. I don't know what's going on with it. Hopefully it's still up and this was just for maintenance or something. I went around the spawn, looking at all the signs posted around the place. And from one, I found that they have their own Reddit page, but we'll wrap back to that later. So this one is Norwegian based on the website, but everything within the server is in English and it runs really well. So I'm guessing they just have a good host. Anyways, I went into the survival map and it was, it was just a war zone. Nothing interesting around at all. Absolute pandemonium for as far as I could see. So I went to check out the creative zone instead. This one's pretty unique because the server's old enough that a bunch of builds were super early 2010s. Like this Nyan cat and funny, funny meme faces. All right, cool. Oh my god. Me again. Besides the old memes, this one had a fair amount of pretty nice looking builds that I'm assuming haven't really been thought about in like a decade by most of their creators. Over here was a pretty good Super Mario Bros. 1-1 recreation. Very cool. Also, I don't know how common these are nowadays, but this was just absolutely full of those classic I built my avatar at a hundred times scale builds. Like they, they were just, they were everywhere on this one. I later went to take a peek at the minigame area and it seems we had some pro spleef heads in this one as this one Goomba had won 2,682 times. Overall, this is a decent one for the classic 2010s pop culture stuff, but we're not done here yet as I had a little look-see at their out of game stuff. And with this, I'm introducing a new segment called looking at old websites, chat rooms, and reddits for interesting things, or Lao Krarfit. Rolls right off the tongue. We'll start with their Reddit, since it was directly advertised in a few places around the server. Right off the bat, there's only two posts recently, and that's a very light recently. One was just asking how old the map is, and one was simply a bump. After those two, the next post was from over five years ago. Now, I'm gonna be honest, uh, this isn't too surprising, because uh, who's posting on the Reddit of a small Minecraft server years after its heyday? I went to posts from over half a decade back, and I don't really know what to put into words, how it feels seeing people from seven years ago be nostalgic for something that, while still around, is a shadow of its former self. There's also a decent number of posts on here that all go over how they long for the golden days of their childhoods in the server itself. People telling stories of logging back in after years of being away, finding out that old friends had become administrators on the server, or had disappeared without a trace. Stories of walking through their hall of fame and seeing familiar names that they had long forgotten. Others recount that even in harsh times, they thought of the members of the server like family, wishing they could go back and relive it all. It was quite a read altogether, and I stopped once I reached the point where I was just seeing actual posts from when it was active. Now, but no, hold, hold your goddamn horses. They also have a wiki. Now, I'll keep this part pretty short, uh, because for the most part, the wiki is exactly what you would expect. It's just some info about the server game modes. You know the drill. The thing I found pretty interesting here was that they have a page dedicated to their regular players. Now, this includes, like, full biographies, noteworthy stuff they've done in creative and survival, fun facts, and, like, some of these wiki pages are more detailed than some pages on actual historical figures. Lost his memory in a car accident at the age of 11. Jet Kuso was the community manager on their unsafe Minecraft server until he disappeared. Distrusts literally every single person on the server. Resigned November 13th, 2014. We're going to France! We're going to France! We're going to France! We're going to France! Going to France. Going to France. Sorry for any lag here. Uh, I wanted to see everything I could. The server was, uh, it was very French, and also very, um, it's very, it's very how to train your dragon themed, for some reason. Also Medal of Honor, and a few other very clashing themes. There was a lot to choose from here, but the first one I ended up going to was Campaign. So Campaign was their Medal of Honor FPS, but I'm assuming it needed more players because it, it wasn't starting, or anything, really. 
The alternative here is I was just lagging out big time because I had a shit ton of ping. So I backed out of this one. I checked out their survival map because usually those are the most interesting, but this one was super restrictive. You couldn't even open doors or gates or anything like that. So I couldn't really explore to the extent I would have liked to. I think I was stuck in some sort of spectator mode. From what I could tell though, this one had a solid amount of pretty cool builds. I just couldn't see any of them from closer than an outside view. I teleported to the creative area and there were a ton of really cool builds. The French are solid architects. Again though, it seemed like someone on the server was a big fan of How to Train Your Dragon because it, it was all over the place. Overall though, this one was a bit too laggy to stay on for an extended period of time. And right when I was about to leave, I ended up lagging out anyways. This is a German one from way back in 2014. Their main board had a whole bunch of big German words I didn't understand, so I kind of skimmed through it. I think I got most of it. Feischeitung's password. Holy shit, that's a big word. I didn't know where to go in this one, so I just kind of kept walking past the spawn, and I stumbled across some absolutely insane builds right off the bat. Mark Tall Bahnhof. Re Rat house. I like this one. Rat house. I thought it would just be these three buildings as set pieces for the spawn, but it, ju it just keeps going. It's genuinely a good chunk of a city here, and all the builds, they hold the same high quality. It's it's insane. I'm not sure if it's based on anywhere specific, maybe, maybe Berlin. I found the railroad station in specific has a lot of similarities to a now demolished station from 1841 which is in Berlin. Whoever the builders were on the server, like props to you, because these, these builds are wonderful. Like this is, this is stock Minecraft. No mods, no shaders, texture packs, anything like that. Even that, it lo this looks fantastic. Oh, sick. This is like, uh, this is like a, this is like a little lecture hall. That's pretty cool. Hotel, it's the Creep Hotel, the Hotel Creep. Hotel Creep. I'm a big fan of the Creep Hotel. Grand, Grand Casino? Oh, let's go. Man, this, this is just like the movie Casino 1995. I tried to go into the free build by hopping onto the train, which it, it seems like that's what that was trying to tell me here with these signs. Uh, I think it's supposed to work, but it, it just didn't. So no free build, sadly. Instead, I kept looking around and I could tell just by looking that there was definitely plenty more to this map. So check this one out. Overall, the builds on this one were very cool, like really, really nice builds. Definitely check it out. The Adventurer's Guild started in this big hub area, which for some reason was lagging, like a lot. Before anyone starts talking smack about my computer in the comments, this is the only area in any of these servers that ran badly. Anyway, it had some shops scattered about, as if it's some kind of mall as well as some teleports to other areas in the server. I started off by just heading into one of the survival zones. I moseyed about for a bit and decided to warp back to spawn, which uh, it, was, it was definitely not the spawn hub from before. I decided that I might as well have a look around this area because it seemed like it was handcrafted rather than just a regular old survival map. And I'm glad I did because this ended up being really cool. Despite starting kind of bland with this long empty road, I eventually found a recreation of Hyrule Castle from Twilight Princess. I tried to basically cheat my way in by swimming through the moat. Uh, it's backfired on me big time because this little shortcut ended up costing me more time than it saved as there was no way in besides the main path, which I had to backtrack to. The town was kind of empty, with buildings seemingly just being shells, but the castle itself was pretty cool. Obviously I had to make my way up it to see what was at the top, and I found myself in a duel with the zombie king. I didn't last very long, but this would not be the last time this bastard would see me. Since I was on Hyrule for a while, I swapped back over to survival to give it another chance. I'm glad to say the revisit was worth it though, because uh, there was some pretty interesting stuff scattered about. The first thing that caught my eye almost instantly was what seemed to be a roller coaster in front of someone's house. And sure enough, that it was that, dude. Like, it was a roller coaster in front of these guys' house. I went for a spin on it and decided to check out their house as well, since I was here. I took some food and supplies from inside, and it was only after this that I saw a sign outside asking for people not to steal, so I left a note back. If this was your house, uh, sorry about that. As I was messing about on their horse, I noticed their sign was backwards which said that the place belonged to Daniel and Mihai. So, 
I'm uh, sorry. Sorry for stealing your food, guys. After this, I set out to find more stuff, since I was now much better equipped to do so. I found this nice little house with this really wholesome sign saying, This could be a house for a new player, at least for one night, or maybe forever. Please don't destroy it. I found this, uh, I found this really sweet and innocent, but also kind of sad because uh, this place clearly hadn't been used and had even been partially destroyed upstairs. There were a few more of these scattered around the area as well. Whoever was building them seemingly wanted to start up a little community that never came to be. If I hear that these have been destroyed, by the way, I will be, I will be real teed off. So please do not disappoint me. I spent a decent amount of time just looking around at these old abandoned homes and buildings, which sometimes had loot inside that I was going to use in my rematch with the zombie king from earlier. Behind this big base here, I found the Uwu Memorial, which I'm assuming is for an in-game cat or dog or something like that. One other thing I was noticing in the survival was that a few places around the map had signs left by fellow virtual tourists, marking down when they had passed through. These ranged from quite recently to a couple years old. It was mostly the same group of a handful of players. One building I found them in was simply called The House, which had another sign upstairs. Motherfu- Now, I'm not directly accusing anyone here, but it seems like one of these players that took a little tour of the place also went on a bit of a griefing spree, because I don't think that it's a coincidence that every house with their signs in them was wrecked to shit in one way or another. They weren't completely destroyed, but a lot had some pretty heavy damage. At one point, I found a community chicken farm which said to leave at least two. They left one. This house here was using lay on all the signs, like it's 2010. Like with, uh, lay storage and le exit. After the French house, I teleported to another part of the survival zone, but this one was picked clean and griefed to hell, so I hopped off the survival part of the server. The next thing a note I found was, uh, what seemed to be a recreation of Hyrule from Ocarina of Time. It seemed like these guys are big fans of Zelda. I didn't stay on this one for very long. All I did was head into the Temple of Time where apparently the Master Sword was taken away for cleaning. With all this adventuring, you may have forgotten that my ultimate goal here is to beat the Zombie King, which I was now more than equipped to do. I returned to the castle and clawed my way back to the top, challenging the king to an epic duel. It's over. I lagged out. It's over. It's over. I lagged out. Oh my god. I went to heaven after this and found heaven's gate. While I was up there, I had the realization that uh, this is a literal version of one of those Christian Minecraft servers people joked about a few years ago. Although I don't know if swearing was against the rules on this one. So a few days had passed since my last login to this one. And I saw that two people were on, which I had never seen previously in the server browser. So I figured I'd hop back on and see what they were up to. Unfortunately, uh, the moment I joined was coincidentally the moment one of the two said goodbye. And their message said they'd be back in a year. And then they left. So I only had one guy to talk to on here. I had a nice talk with Mr. Epic Man 3, albeit it was pretty brief. We had a small chat starting with how long he's been on the server. He told me he's uh, somewhat of a regular and that he's been on this for about three years. I followed it up asking if there was any particular reason he was playing on this old version of Minecraft. He responded that he simply enjoys playing old Minecraft sometimes. Fair enough. I agreed with him in chat, and that was the last message I sent. I waited for him to converse more, because I didn't want to pester him with a ton of questions. He didn't say anything else, and was seemingly just relaxing playing the game. So I let him be and logged off this one. Good news gamers, we've got another little installment of Lao Crawfit with this one. The Adventurer's Guild website was made in 2007, and it certainly shows. The Minecraft forum on this site is pretty barren, but there was one post I found interesting from way back in 2013, with someone saying they would hop on the server once they had all the info. They were quickly given the info, uh, just a couple days later, and then nine years passed, and the owner replied to the thread saying that they were still waiting for this person to arrive. I mean, you gotta at least, I guess, respect the patience. Anyways, that's really it. This, uh, the forum here only had like three posts for the Minecraft, and that was really the only one I found interesting. So, we're gonna move on. Um, 
So this bonus segment is going to be a bit of a sidestep. It's still the same thing, but I didn't want to leave modded Minecraft out of the video, as it's a pretty decent chunk of what people like to play. I hopped onto a modded client and chose a server called The War of the Ring. I chose this one for the modded section over something like Tech It, because everyone and their mother knows those mod packs. This one looked promising and obviously Lord of the Rings themed, so I had to give it a shot. Also, it just looked too cool to pass up. From the second I joined this one, I could tell this was a very intricate mod. It had me reading all kinds of guides and notes before I even took one step into the world. There were a ton of classes and subclasses, each with different gear, quests, starting locations, and from what I could tell, th this was a this was a gargantuan mod, and I hadn't even left spawn. I joined the iconic pirate faction as an evil man. Bad man, bad man, bad man, bad man. I spawned on this tiny little island, which looked to be about 0.1% of the mainland. Even then, this island was girthy. I walked around on it for a good few minutes before reaching the shore. Like, this was genuinely the biggest server I've ever seen. It's massive. But despite all this girth and complexity, there was one guy besides me on the server. That sucks, like, big time. Like, this server is so big, so nice, so intricate. There's one guy. Where's all the people? This might, this might be the chillest lion I've ever seen. I like this lion. I fast traveled onto the mainland and killed a bandit. By the way, check out this sick fast travel animation. but I wanted to try out something a little more unique, so I respawned and restarted everything as an orc. Once I was back in business, I orked around for a bit, and I decided my goal is gonna be, I'm gonna go chill at Mount Doom. That's what I'm gonna do, that's my goal. This garbage fort is for fighting the Gondor invasion. All right. I was pretty much sprinting directly towards Mount Doom for a solid like 20 to 30 minutes. I'm not exaggerating that. It, that, it genuinely is like 30 minutes of raw footage of me running towards Mount Doom. I found some cool orc towers and camps along the way. This camp here had a bunch of shit on the floor, as if there had been a massacre here recently. After, and I'm not exaggerating here, again, I'm not exaggerating, after around 30 minutes, I reached the border of the area that Mount Doom is located in. Not even the actual place, the zone it's located in. So after just waltzing into Sour Ron's chill zone, I checked out a couple of the big fellas, and I decided I would save a bit of time by just, just fast traveling to Mount Doom. Can I just, can I just fast travel to Mount Doom? I can. I can. <laughs> Why didn't they just do this in the movie? There were some wargs chilling around. Now these are an orc's best friend, so I tamed one and rode it to the top. Why is this here? Who built this? The gate to the place at the top was locked, so I went back down to see if there was anything else of note. While tumbling down the side of Mount Doom, I stumbled across this funny ring, so I tossed her into the lava. Problem solved, bud. This is another really old one, being from all the way back in 2012. It's seemingly still kinda, maybe a little itty bitty bit active, as it got an update in May, but I've checked this one a bunch and only one time did I ever see anyone playing on it. Lucky for me, this one had a language option, so I didn't have to blindly guess what it was saying this time. One of the first things I found was that this one had a, uh, it had a, it had a marriage system? I didn't look into this very much, but I just found that pretty strange. I also agreed to handing over all of my data to them without reading a single thing. Next up was a quick little gambling addict arc. I did some scratch tickets for a bit and lost everything. After getting that out of my system, I had an actual look at what the server offered. First thing I did was go into the creative zone. Again, the Germans have solid builds, continuing their creative streak. This one didn't have survival from what I could tell, so I went back to spawn to check out their mini games, as that seems to be the server's main draw. I found it pretty odd that what's essentially a minigame server continues to be up and running with nobody around to actually play the minigames. My best bet here is that there's a small but dedicated group that still plays on this, likely including whoever owns the server, and I probably just missed them whenever I checked. I wanted to hop into a few of these minigames myself, but the lobby is as far as I could get. Seeing as these were really all that was left on this one, and that I couldn't access them, I hopped on the next server.
This one's from 2019, but according to their website, it started development way back in 2015, which is kind of sad because just a couple of years later, and it's completely empty. It's another minigame server, with this one being purely minigames. No survival, creative, or anything like that. For some odd reason, this one had hats and skins, despite Minecraft having that for free. I guess these ones are special. Now with this one, I wanted to try and at least get into some of the minigame maps, but the problem here was uh, every minigame, save for parkour, needed at least four people to start. So, um... I guess the uh, I guess the lobbies look nice. There was also this villager named the Redeemer, which sounds pretty sick, but he just exchanged points for loot. So, it was literal. Looking at this one more broadly, it's strange that some of these servers, which are purely minigames, are still up and running, even with, like, nobody on for weeks at a time. Like, for what reason would you ever hop onto one of these instead of a server with thousands of players? Even if you got three or four other people to hop on one of these with you, that's pretty much the bare minimum to get these minigames running. On top of that, it's running an old version of Minecraft, so it's it's just a head scratch to me. Like, who who's this for? Who, who's playing these? This also isn't me trying to be, like, negative or anything. If anyone's an owner of one of these kinds of servers and has some insight into this, let me know. Like, I, who's this for? I genuinely want to know. I looked into this one further outside of the game and found a post made a year ago saying that it would be shutting down, but then they went back on that, so I don't know what's going on here. I assume they found a cheaper way to keep it running. Check this one out if, uh, if you're a big fan of minigames, I guess. Moving on. This one was called The Big Dig, which sounded kind of funny, but uh, it ended up being a Fallout RP server. I was still gonna give it a look, so I tried to make a guy. Yeah, 54 years old, 5 foot 2, 150 pounds. It didn't work though, so I guess I messed something up. Awesome. What I realized after a little bit of looking around was, uh, you have to manually apply through their website to play on this one. Bye. No, I'm not doing that. This one was called No BS Hybrid Multi-World. I expected this one to get right down to business. No BS, just like it says. I went to this little rule queue and spawn, and the sign to agree to these rules just, it just didn't work. So I was stuck. Kind of BS if you ask me. I had decided to at least check their website and it had a live map. So here's what you missed out on, I guess. Cool. We've got a finish one here, and with some retroactive translating, I was apparently in spectator mode, so that's great. One thing I noticed that made this one a bit of an oddity was that somehow in a survival server, they managed to build a pretty dense town made by a bunch of different people. I guess starting new people off in spectator mode helps with that, but usually in survival servers, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and these would be griefed in some way. But surprisingly, it was... It was completely intact, everything was fine. At one point I was looking at this big manor, built solely to flex, and some Finnish guy joined for like 10 seconds, didn't say a word, and then left. He never came back. Could this be Finnish hero brand real? In general with this one, the more I explored, the more elaborate the buildings got, while it probably should have been the opposite. Like for instance, there was a whole separate community-made village, way out from spawn, that was even bigger and beefier than the last one. Buck nutty if you ask me. This is nice. I like these fellas. It took a solid 20 minutes in this one for me to find the first house with any damage on it, but this was also right around when I hopped off because I had seen a solid amount of this one, and I was, I was kind of sick of being in spectator mode to be honest. Next one up was a server called Crewcraft! Exclamation mark. I think the spawn on this one was randomized because I started on someone's house. I checked inside for some free shit but it was empty. Nice looking place though. Right off the bat, I could see some pretty tall buildings in the distance, so I went to check those out. They were these weird sky pillar things that didn't really lead anywhere. Probably just someone getting rid of some blocks or messing around. In general, the server had infrequent half-completed buildings and a few signs of life scattered about, but despite its age, the overworld was surprisingly intact. I only occasionally saw anything of note, like this hole with some cobblestone in it, or this building which had a non-functional nether portal in the basement. Usually in survival servers like this, the area around spawn is 
complete chaos and a totally demolished war zone for a few hundred blocks in any direction. This one was just a handful of buildings and uh, nothing at all. Everything was unprotected as well. Nothing was stopping me or anyone else from just breaking anything built in the server. Seemingly they had no commands either for some reason, so I, I don't know how this one wasn't griefed like at all. This isn't me telling you to do that by the way, just an observation. I hopped off this one after exploring for a bit because it, it simply didn't have much to it. Moving on. This one is my favorite by a long shot. It's called Griggs Quest Adventure Map, and it lives up to the name. This was a full-blown story server with all kinds of quests, skills, and lore. Just in Spawn, you can get a good taste of what the server is all about, just from the signs. Right-click here to discover more about the world's bountiful lore. Solving Greek's quest means joining guilds is key. The more you join, the better off you'll be. Head down the chute, the descent is a hoot. When you get to the bottom, climb up to the top. The pickaxe quest should be your next stop. Turn and go to the immortal stone below. Just five minutes in, and this was already one of the most charming little servers I've ever been on. Probably the most charming, if I'm being honest. As for what was actually going on, I started with a simple quest to read lore around the spawn and then leave. And one of the first things I noticed was that the sky was ringed for some odd reason. Once I was out in a boat, things started off pretty slow. This is mainly due to me having to learn the ropes and reading through some of the lore. By the way, some of these lore books are like 60 pages long. It was honestly pretty overwhelming with just how much there was to do. Things were pretty tame for a while, as I just walked around doing some simple quests and joining guilds. It was posted all over that I would need to join three guilds in order to attempt to become an Air Lord. One of the guilds I could join was the Purchasers, by refilling these scattered cat food dishes. This would enlist my services to their leader, Butterscotch, the iconic cat. I ended up getting into the candlestick makers, the wheat farmers, and the cartographers to start, and this was enough to try my luck at becoming an air lord. If you would become an air lord, do the quest, ascend to the heights to prove you are best. If you ascend the protective rings, you will see so many things. At the top of the rings, you'll get a reward. No fall damage. You're an air lord. So full transparency here, I have no idea what an air lord is. It just sounds kind of cool, so of course I had to do it. Plus, I mean, no fall damage is nice. All I had to do was uh, run these air lord rings, as it said. I didn't know how long it would take, but it seemed relatively easy. So I, uh, I underestimated the air lord rings a bit. They were, um... They were kind of taking a really goddamn long time to do, and I got a bit of reading in along the way. At one point, I, I literally passed by the spawn area, which was already super high up compared to anything else, but it also told me I was getting close. The rings were shrinking smaller and smaller as I continued on. Occasionally, there were these rest points with some loot. Uh, these gave so much loot that I literally couldn't carry everything they tried to give me, so I had to toss a bunch of bullshit in my inventory to carry the cash. After about 30 minutes of running circles around the whole map, I reached the Airlord Peak. They had this fun little dummy animation at the top to celebrate, and as it said earlier, I no longer took fall damage. Pretty worth the effort in my book. Skipping forward a bit, after becoming an Airlord, I wanted to venture out and see what else awaited in the world. I left the protected area and saw some pretty sick shit in the distance. Pirate ships, temples, and other cool buildings, but I was, I was blocked off from getting a closer look. Now, these were either decorative or I, I wasn't beefy enough to get out there yet. I think I had to become... Not just an air lord, but probably a lord of everything before I could get out there. And I'm gonna be honest, I really didn't, I didn't have time for that, because that would have most likely taken a long time. I played on Griggs for a good while, and seemingly barely scratched the surface of it. To be honest, I'll, I'll probably get back on, because it was a pretty cool server. I'd highly recommend checking this one out and giving it some life. It had so much charm and heart put into it. After playing, I hopped onto the official Griggs Quest website they had linked. I found it odd that this seemed to also be a teacher's website, having syllabi for classes and some notes, along with some info on the Minecraft server, so it wasn't like a wrong link or something. I'm assuming this means that the teacher was the owner of the server, and that makes it even cooler to be honest. The server is clearly made out of passion with a lot of heart and soul, not for monetization or anything. I'd assume it was made for his students, and that's pretty awesome.
Now, I didn't, I didn't really know how to go about this part. I was debating even putting it in here, but I feel I have to mention it, so I'm going to try to keep it as brief and as respectful as I can. I tried searching for the owner of the site to maybe talk with him about it or potentially interview him, but sadly the first thing I found was that he passed away earlier this year. Obviously I didn't know him, so all I can say is I hope he rests well. It seems like he was a fun and creative person. With all this said, um... I really don't know if the server will remain up if he was the actual owner. It's possible someone else hosts it and manages it, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. I would hate to see it go. To close this one out, give Griggs Quest a try while it's still here. It's great. Let's continue. For another little bonus segment here, while I was making this, I had this urge to look for a few maps I remember playing on way back in the day. These are just a couple old iconic maps from like 10 plus years ago that I felt were interesting enough to look at. Back when people actually liked them, all the way back in 2011, a pretty iconic map was released called the Temple of Notch. Most people probably know it from this nearly 12 year old video by FV Disco, who made the map by the way which has close to 20 million views. It shows off a quick playthrough of the map and ends there. For the longest time, I didn't know this was like an actual map you could download and play. I thought they had just made it for the video. So this was my first ever time playing this one. I went through it normally to start. Everything worked as intended. It woke up, cried, yada yada, you know the drill if you've seen the video. I think these dispensers up here were supposed to drop these diamonds and stuff all over me, but they just didn't, no clue why. I went inside his skull to take a little peek at what was going on beneath the surface, and the whole thing is, as probably expected, pretty elaborate. I'm fairly certain this map came out before command blocks, so all this was done completely by hand with redstone. It might not be that impressive today, but for its time, it's pretty cool. Also, it's kind of dumb, but I doubt very many people have seen this giant chunk of land that's just missing a bit behind the temple, probably as a result of using World Edit or another program like that. Now this is one I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with if you played back in like 2012 to 2014. We're going to take a look at the OG survival games map, which was by so many people I'm just going to flash their names on screen. My friends and I used to play this one religiously back in the day when they were new, so I wanted to hop on and see what I missed and what I remembered. I forgot that the spawn was just this bedrock chamber, which is a pretty big contrast to modern servers, some of which I looked at here, that have these giant, sprawling, intricate lobbies, which in comparison to this one are a thousand times better. It's a throwback to simpler times. The first thing out of spawn I did was take a look at the loot in the center. I wasn't expecting anything because I thought this stuff was placed in here randomly by servers, but it was all preset items. I may just be misremembering this though, and that would make sense considering I haven't played this in around a decade. I checked inside this tower which had items in it for a host to add to the circle. I guess this is here specifically for groups of friends running custom games, or more likely for the time period. Tubers. Now I'm not going to be bringing up the subject of Minecraft tubers of this era, because uh, that's that's a big mess of a lot of messed up people. So I'm sorry if you expect me to delve into that at all. After a bit of looking around, the first real building I found was this silly little stone hut with this big secret underground part. It ended up trolling me, epic style, with this pressure plate drop. Next up was this super secret parkour room way out in the big drink, which had two apples and a music kit as loot. What the fuck? There was another secret area way out at the corner of the map, as well as being underground that had some seeds as the loot. Why would you- why would you ever come out here if this is the loot you're getting? At this point I figured they just didn't expect anyone to actually come out this far, and to be honest, when I was younger, I- I always thought these far out islands were just set dressing, but this chest also on one of these islands had a bow in it, which is top tier loot compared to most things here. Another thing of note was that I received the iconic gift of Fluctus. What I was mainly noticing during this little excursion is that the map is way bigger than I remembered. I thought it would be like a decently sized island with some buildings on it, but there was so much stuff that I've never even seen. Countless traps, underground bases, hidden bunkers, the list goes on. Like there was this, there was this whole giant underground prison thing with parkour, redstone contraptions, and f***ing lore. Lore in the survival games map. I flew around this one with free reign for a good while, and I guarantee there's, there's still some more secrets that I never even found. This one was a blast for the past from me, and maybe, maybe only me, so I'm sorry if this section bored you. Especially if you never played this. It's been around a decade since I've been on this one, so I had a great time just looking around. Now, I don't know how popular this game mode is anymore, or even if it still exists as it once did, but I had a blast just looking around at some old maps made for it. So many classic maps that I I'm not even sure exist anymore.
This one is called Games MC, and it has some people on every now and then, but it's decently old, so I wanted to give it a shot. Just to be clear, when I was on, the server was empty. Before even starting this one, though, the title screen said Peter Griffin. Once I got into this one, it gave me some shit in German. I'm pretty sure this agreement here, with the, uh, the Datenschutzerkelerung, means I agreed to be stalked, kidnapped, and cooked over a fire. I just clicked green, because green is good, and it worked. I didn't know any commands, obviously, so I just started walking around. I had these, uh, funny armor stand guys posted all around the place. I like this guy, Sven. Bernd? Werner Ziegler. I was going down, go stop. They had this crypt graveyard thing around the back of a building. I didn't know what it was for. It had dates and names on it, so I assume it was for something. They sounded like the names of places with Sugar Islands and Red City, so I'd assume it's just places they nuked out of existence. I managed to get into the creator for this one. It was a bit more tame compared to the others. Nothing really of note. Some small scattered builds and a few nicer buildings. I also went into a teleport called Farm which I think was the survival, but I'm not sure. The spawn seemed to be completely random, and it put me in the middle of absolutely nowhere, as I couldn't find a single speck of human life anywhere in this world, so I left it be. This one was a French server called Maddencraft, or Mad in Craft Survival. It's from way back in 2013, so we get another real oldie here. Right off the bat in spawn, we've got some signs in French. Now, my French is a little rusty, but I'm pretty sure this sign reads, There is no 40th president. There is no 40th president. There is no 40th. I went into the creative first here, and it seems that the French are big fans of beacons, apparently. Got a big enough joint there, Rick? For some reason, the survival map spawned me in creative mode, so I flew out of spawn until it swapped me back into survival, and it nearly instantly killed me. Now, I actually couldn't tell if this was the real survival map, because I, I couldn't do a single goddamn thing. I couldn't break blocks, eat, open doors, like nothing at all. I was basically just a walking camera. I'm assuming there was some agreement in French or something like that that I didn't do. It's the way she goes, I guess. Before I headed off, I had one last little look in the spawn area, and they had their leaderboards up, where a couple fellas had over 70,000 mob kills. I went onto their website to check this because they hit a leaderboard on there, and these guys had a lot of playtime on this server. Heading out properly this time, mobs didn't give a single shit about me, but at the same time, I couldn't do much to them either. I managed to get my hands on some meat, and uh, I wasn't allowed to use pork. For some reason, despite everything else, not being able to break blocks, open doors, anything, really, I was, for some reason, allowed to just take shit from people's chests. Funny. Overall, from what I saw, the server has a fair amount of strange, nice, and well-crafted buildings that were mostly empty on the inside and abandoned while still having protections. Some of these were really elaborate as well, a few giant castles and houses with full underground sections. I only wish I could get into a few of these places because they looked really cool, but since I was trapped outside, I moved on. I have been sentenced to 17 years in federal prison. So here's a prison break Minecraft server. Right out of the cell and spawn, this one looked like it was going to be a huge grind. Spoilers. Uh, it was. It was It was absolutely a massive grind. Starting off, I had a look at the map, and I didn't want to waste any time, so I got right into the hard labor. Hard labor sucked, so I went back to looking around. They had some other jobs, shops, and cells. Uh, for some reason, in this prison, you had to rent a cell. It seems like in 2015, there was a big breakout attempt. Originally, I was going to leave it at that, but I did a little digging and CIA-level investigation and found an eight-year-old video with a hundred views of the event in question. I guess the opportunities. Sapling, you're not going to buy... 64 wooden tools. Okay, fair enough. I didn't want to mine for money anymore, so I swapped to fishing. Big fan of fishing. Wishing I was fishing. This section was super cut down because, um, at this point I'd been on for more than an hour, and I barely made any money. Based on this, it would have taken me a few hours just to get to the next tier, and the freedom tier was like 25 times the price of that. So I, I pretty much gave up any hope of breaking out. I broke out. I had achieved true freedom on the Minecraft Prison Break server. This freedom, however, was all merely a facade, as I was trapped within the confines of the invisible barrier. Knowing I was experiencing an endless confined freedom within these walls, I cut ties with the world and expelled myself from the server, as well as the game. And so, after a three-month slumber, Redline returned to YouTube with a goofy Minecraft video. The fanfare was mild, as only one question was on everyone's mind. Where on earth was this strange creature Googie? 
The answer, which may come as a surprise, is that Googie too was sleeping. Hey there, glad you made it to the end. First off, I hit 100k a bit ago, and I just uh, want to say thanks. So, uh, thanks for 100k. And for everyone that's waited three months for this to come out, uh, thanks for sticking around. I had some computer issues for like a month that I don't want to bore you with, which are kind of why this one took so long. It didn't actually take three months to make a Minecraft video. I was actually planning on doing this sort of thing myself for a while, but I got a decent number of comments and other videos saying I should do something like this, so I figured, yeah, why not, you know? This was supposed to just be a, a little 20 minute romp through some old Minecraft servers, but it ended up a nostalgic, melancholic, and uh, at times just pretty genuinely upsetting. But it was fun. I like doing it. I haven't really been a big crafter since like 2014 or 15, so excuse me if some of the things in this video were just like dead wrong or common knowledge nowadays. Really this video was an excuse to go back and relive some of my younger gaming years. With all this said, enjoy your summer, or whenever you're watching this, play some old games you haven't touched in a while, and have fun. Bye.